Hello, my name is Yaroslav Pankovsky and I am a solution specialist at Ancore Business Solutions. This video and this post are going to continue the series of posts and videos dedicated to dimensions in Microsoft Dynamics NAV. The previous post has focused on the definition of dimensions as well as their types and their flexibility. This post is going to focus on how to create dimensions and dimension values in Dynamics NAV 2016. It is worth mentioning that although this post and this video are focusing on NAV 2016, the setup of dimension and dimension values are very similar across different versions of the application. Let's go to the uh, application itself and first of all, locate the dimensions. There are two ways how we can do so. One way is to go to the departments, then locate the financial management section, navigate to the setup, go to the administration and finally select the dimensions. Another way to get here is to type in dimensions in the search box and select the appropriate choice there. So, since we are looking today at Kronos Canada Incorporated Company, a company that has already created some dimensions, we can see that um, uh, there are a few there already and uh, I have just created a test. We can create a new dimension there, for example, uh, test one. And we can see that there are several fields that we should um, fill out when we create a new dimension. The first field is the code. So the code is the short name of your dimension. The name is the uh, full name. For example, it can be test, um, can be for instance test one, encore, and so on. The code caption field is very interesting. Um, for example, this is how this dimension will appear on your reports. But make sure that this page and the language of your company are aligned. Otherwise, you will be unable to take, take advantage of this field. In order to make sure that the languages are aligned, you can the application menu and then you can go to select language and then select your language. So I'm using uh, English and my location is Canada. Uh, the, uh, the description field can be of use if you're using several similar dimensions like in this example, for example, test and test one. So this field would be used to differentiate between those two fields. For example, I can say that uh, this dimension should be used, used when testing. And this dimension should be used, for example, use when selling a product or, uh, uh, or a service and so on. So the uh, last field which is of interest to us is the blocked field. So what is this field used for? Right now I can easily delete a dimension by right clicking on the selected line or selected dimension and clicking delete line. Yes. So I can easily uh, do so because I have not yet posted anything using this dimension. Once I have posted at least one document where this dimension is used, I will be unable to delete this dimension. And the only way to prevent users from using this dimension, if I am uh, not willing to continue using it, it would be to block it. At the same time, it is possible to block individual dimensions or uh, individual dimension values to be more precise. And to do so, we need to go to dimension values. And let's go and have a look at how area dimension is set up by Kronos Canada. To do so, I'm going to highlight the field and I'm going to select the dimension values button in the ribbon. Make sure that uh, uh, this field is visible to you. If you're unable to see this field as I do, it, mu it may be that you're using a different, different role. I'm using a bookkeeper role and then this button can be located on the actions or action uh, tab right here. So I have just spoken about how we can block dimensions and in order to uh, avoid blocking the whole dimension but maybe just to block a particular dimension value, 
we can go to dimension values and block particular dimensions that we don't want to use anymore or we don't want users to be using anymore. Let's say we are not selling any products to Europe, North European Union anymore. So we want users to be unable to use this dimension. For that purpose, I would use the blocked field, but I don't want to block any dimension values at this point, so I'm going to keep it unblocked. In order to create a new dimension, well, you will have to fill out several fields. The first field is code. Code is an interesting field uh, because it can help you to make your analysis uh, very easy. Uh, and in order to facilitate analysis, it is best to have numbers in the, as the code, just as we have here. Yes, it is possible to have a code something like uh, like this, for instance, but in that case, it would be much more difficult to uh, to total our uh, dimension values. So for that purpose, I'm going to uh, keep it as a number. Now, we can see that the uh, next field is name. So how do you want to name your dimension value? Uh, in this case, we see that this is a dimension which is called area, and correspondingly, the dimension values are related to this, uh, to this dimension. So they are uh, Europe, which is then subdivided into Europe North, and Europe North is further subdivided into two more dimension values, Europe North European Union, and Europe North Non-European Union, and so on. So that's the name uh, value. How, how do you want to see your dimensions appearing on your report. Dimension value type is a, a very important field and uh, there, are, there is a drop-down menu here and several options available. So what is standard? Standard, we can say that for example Europe North European Union is a standard value type. So standard means that this is the uh, the value that you will see on your report. So, for example, you will be to, uh, you will be able to see a line in your report, which is called Europe North European U Union, and then you will see how much, for example, revenue is coming from Europe North. Another selection is heading. Let's say your company is using a complicated uh, uh, dimension setup. In that case, it is very convenient to use heading, and um, Heading can be uh, can be anything. It's it's an optional field, but is very convenient to use headings if you have multiple lines. So in this case, there are only a few lines. But if, for example, your company is interested to make an analysis uh, of cities to which a product specific product sold, then you may want to create a heading. For example, your heading can be in a particular country. Uh, and then within that country, you may have different dimension values which are of type standard. The next field is total. So total is very similar to end total, and we're going to speak about it in a minute, but total is used when you are trying to sum up the dimension values which are uh, uh, which are located not following one another immediately, but at particular uh, particular distance, for example, in, in one and so on. The next one is begin total. And we can see that there are several begin totals here, like Europe, Europe North, um, America. They are all begin totals. What does this mean? So this is another way to group your dimension values. Um, it is of interest not only to see on your report how much revenue is coming from Europe North individually or from Europe North uh, uh, non-European countries, but also, for example, how much revenue is coming from the whole Europe North or maybe how much is coming from the whole Europe. That's why we are going to use begin total. So begin total is the uh, starting point uh, at which the application will start to sum up or to total your dimension values. And total is the ending point of your uh, of your totaling. So, for example, if I want to total my revenue coming from Europe, it's not enough just to uh, create an entry which is begin total type, 
but we also need to create an entry which is n total type just as it is done in this uh, setup so by doing so i can uh, i can specify what i am going to total and in this case i am totaling dimensions dimension values from 10 to 55 and you can see the advantage of using numbers here because if i would be uh, if i were using uh, uh, just uh, uh, some alphabetical names it would be much more difficult although still possible and we see that two, uh, two dots are used here so two dots means from two so dimension values from 10 to 55 are going to be summed up and this setup will allow me in my report to see how much revenue again is coming from uh, the whole Europe or, for example, how much uh, uh, raw materials have been purchased from Europe, or how many items were manufactured in my uh, European locations, and so on. In order to change global dimensions, it is necessary to go to the general ledger setup. For this purpose, I am going to type it in in the search box, and then to select the appropriate choice from there. In order to view what the current global dimensions are, we need to go to dimensions fast tab and it is possible to see that dimension, global dimension one is department in Kronos Canada and global dimension two is project but let's say I want my area to become my global dimension one this will allow me to use area as flow filter on my chart of accounts and so to change my global dimension I first need to make sure that it is not used as a shortcut dimension. So I'm going to delete it from here first, and then I need to go to the Actions tab, go to the Change Global Dimensions, and then select the area from the drop-down menu. I'm going to click OK, and then the application is going to ask me to confirm if that's what I want. So let's say I'm going to agree, and you can see that it's going to to take uh, about a minute or maybe a couple of minutes but it's uh, going to take more much more if uh, your company has a big database so I can see that now my global uh, global dimension uh, one is area in sum, this post has focused on the dimensions and how they can be set up in Microsoft Dynamics NIV 2016. In particular, this post has addressed how shortcut dimensions can be set up, how dimension values can be set up, and how global dimensions can be set up. Thank you for watching this video and reading this article. If you have any questions, please contact us at Encore Business Solutions by using this phone number or using the contact form available on our website at www.encorebusiness.com contact. Thank you. Goodbye.